All right, in this demonstration, I'm going to show you how an Illustrator uh, Creative Cloud version 2014 to assign color profiles that you would use in the School of Art and Design for printing on the RGB Epson 7800 printer. It's an 8 ink printer, so it has 8 different colors um, that use an RGB color mode. So um, we're going to talk about color mode in a minute, but before we even really get into what you do in Illustrator, the very first thing that you need to do is you need to go in, into your work environment up in the Apple and go to System Preferences and choose Displays. And then before you do anything, go to Color and make sure that the, the correct display profile is selected. There are two things to consider whenever you're choosing color profiles. One is to set the display profile for the monitor so that when you're looking at that monitor that you're using that color calibration that's going to work with the printer. So in this case we've calibrated the monitors in our labs and uh, the current one that we're using at the time of this video is called Art Lab 2014-0702.icc. Um, if this is you know an old video your teacher might tell you to use a more current um, profile but at this time that's what it is. And one other thing is if you I don't know if you can see it in this video um, I don't know if it's picking the color change up but uh, as I click around where it says iMac display and so forth my color on my screen is dramatically changing so that's why you need to make sure that you're using the right color environment whenever you even start making color choices about your work um, otherwise you you know might have to go back and redo it anyway so go ahead and make sure that that's set up you don't have to do this if you know you're not printing on this printer and uh, you don't technically have to do it if you're printing on this printer but you're gonna have the best um, outcome if you do alright so now that that's done um, we can come into our document the first thing I want you to look at up here in your title bar is if you've already been working on a file see if it's set in CMYK if it is then we need to change it to RGB ideally you would set your document color mode right as soon as you're starting your new file and creating it for the first time and you would set it to be RGB mode but in case you didn't do that and you forgot or you didn't know you had to do it you can go back and change it now and you can see how the color shifts and if the color shifts too much you can go and make some corrections either in your raster graphics um, and re-import them or embed them or link them um, or in your uh, vector art. So we're going to go up to where it says file, choose document color mode and then RGB color. And I don't know if you can see that but I noticed that that changed a lot. All right, <clears throat> It looked like type crimes got brighter and some other colors shifted just a little bit. So you'd have to make sure that you're okay with those color shifts. Sometimes it's not going to be that big of a deal but in some color ranges, especially like in solid cyans and certain magentas, you are going to see kind of like the, a dulling effect whenever you go back and forth between the two color modes. So um, next thing uh, that we need to do is actually assign the profile. So if you go to edit, you're going to see a menu option down here. It says assign profile and you're going to choose where it says profile here and then from this drop down you're going to select artlab2014.icc that we assigned to the monitor profile okay and this might not show up if you haven't changed your um, your color mode from CMYK so if you don't see this and you're in one of the computer labs it's very there's a very good chance that you are still sitting in CMYK mode or something and you can't find it so go ahead and click on OK so now we've got that assigned Okay, you can save your document and uh, or whatever. And then the other thing that you got to do before you, you know, save this and submit it for printing is you need to export it out as a JPEG, a high resolution JPEG, not just like some crummy little thing you get off the web, but like a high resolution, good for print JPEG. Um, and the reason that we're doing that is that uh, it maintains the quality very, very well. Like you can't really even see any difference. And uh, the other thing is as long as you output it at the high resolution. The other issue is that um, that way we don't have to worry about uh, fonts and you know not showing up on the other the printer's printer um, and, or the printer's uh, computer server and we don't have to you know worry about 
those kinds of other things like with the rip crashing when it tries to print because it's trying to do too much mathematic mathematical calculation for vectors things like that so a JPEG is a great format for us to use so what we're gonna do before we export that is we need to go ahead and draw an artboard and the reason is that you know maybe for this poster it wouldn't be a big deal but if you have like potentially any clipping masks that go off and outside of your bleed area or maybe you had some objects that you threw off to the side over here um, well all of those objects and things they're gonna get picked up and saved into the file like it's one gigantic huge print unless you set your artboard so what we can do is go into our tool pal palette and down at the bottom there's this little grid looking icon it's the artboard tool and you can click on that and it's going to try to automatically select your artboard for you and it usually gets it right but you might have to adjust it so uh, when you get the artboard selected for the area that you want to actually print what you can do is just hit the return key and then it pulls this up you can name your artboard I'm just gonna leave mine as artboard one it doesn't have to be named make sure your dimensions are right also if you want it to display things like center marks crosshairs whatever you can do that but uh, you'll see the name of the artboard down here and you just click OK now what I can do is export and it's gonna only export the area that's uh, confined in the artboard as long as I set the settings up right so I'm gonna go to file and then I'm gonna choose the export option and we're gonna just put it on our desktop and I'm gonna export out as a JPEG um, and there might be occasions where let's say that you know if you're sending something to a printer and they demand that you have a TIFF you know or maybe you're sending something for competition and they tell you that it has to be a TIFF file for print you can do it as a TIFF that's fine just for us a JPEG even though it uses compression it's actually still a, gonna look great it's gonna look perfect alright so just know that it doesn't have to be a JPEG it can be something else alright and we're gonna click on use artboards that's really important if you don't do that it's still probably gonna capture anything that's outside of your artboard so you're gonna choose I think it defaults to this but you're gonna choose range one or whatever the artboard number is that you're printing and then you can call it whatever you want up here let's call it exactly what it is uh, and then dot JPEG export and that's going to give you some really important options. Make sure that your color model is RGB. If it's not defaulting to this, that means you forgot already at this point. You forgot to change it to CMYK. And that should be like a trigger to go ahead and hit cancel. Change your color mode so that you can make sure that it's looking the way you expect it to look. Make sure that your quality is up to 10. It doesn't default to 10 normally, but uh, I think it, it remembers the last setting. So that's why it's at 10. Um, this is fine baseline compression resolution is going to default to 72 ppi it thinks oh it's a jpeg you probably want it for the web not so we're gonna make sure that you could choose 300 but I'm telling you right now that our um, Epson 7800 is optimal at 365 ppi so you can go ahead and put 365 ppi in it now just know that that's gonna be really good for your vector art hitting the target resolution is great for your vector art if you have uh, raster graphics that are in these files and they already don't you know have enough resolution then changing this value to something really big isn't gonna somehow make them better it's actually if anything gonna make them worse so it's really really important that you know that this resolution right here is for clarity of of like the crispness of your um, your vectors and things like that when it comes to uh, your raster graphics you really needed to start out with good high quality images to begin with okay so then lastly down here where it says embed ICC profile check this and make sure it's using that art lab 2014 whatever ICC uh, profile okay and that way it'll embed it and it'll carry that to the printer click OK and then now if I minimize this you'll see on my desktop that I have this file that's a JPEG if I want to double check that and make sure that it looks good before submitting it for print alright you should do this open it in Photoshop because it's now it's a JPEG you can do that and take a look at it and what I recommend you do is I recommend that you look at it at you know not like this where you can go oh, okay 
everything fits in my window, that's only at 8.33%. That's not seeing how it's really going to look when it's printed. Change this value down here in the bottom left to 100%, and that right there is the quality of print that you're going to get. So if your vectors look you know, sharp, they look good, then you're fine. If your raster graphics look really pixelated and funky, then they're gonna they're not gonna magically look better in the poster. I guarantee they're gonna look worse. So make sure that you are looking at this and not just sort of like turning a blind eye and hoping for the best, because it's you know it's gonna be what it's gonna be. Um, so look at it at 100%. Looking at it above 100% is really, you know, not that valuable because it that's not the way it's going to look and also it might even worse give you a false sense of a, you know, sort of poor quality. The other th reason that you want to look at uh, this in Photoshop is you want to get a sense of how colors are going to look next to each other. Something that's extremely important to remember, extremely important to remember is that if you are printing uh, on matte paper, the luster has a pretty good sheen on it and it pops. But whenever you're printing on the matte paper, some colors side by side don't look so hot because of the way that the ink absorbs into the paper. So, um, for instance, if you have a navy blue next to another navy blue that's like a slightly different value, you know, that might translate just fine on luster and it might look great here. But just remember that there's a good chance that it's not going to look good on um, on a matte print, especially if you have sort of small type or something where you've got like a sort of like a black on black or a white on white or something like that, and you're trying to sort of have subtle differences. Just remember that this is in fact a poster, and it's you know probably not meant to be read like a book, um, and so if somebody cannot ascertain what it's saying, um, then unless that's sort of the point of your poster, then it, you're really not communicating very well. So make sure that you're making those right choices as well. Okay, uh, and then when you're finished, just make sure that you submit it the way that your teacher tells you to, and uh, you should be good to go. And if, oh, one last thing actually, go up here to image, and I want you to look at image size when you're in Photoshop. This is kind of important. I want to I want you to make sure that these things are matching so that your whatever re resolution you told it to be whether it's 300 or 365 or whatever make sure that while it says 365 here that it also says the proper print dimension in inches up here if it says something crazy like the resolution is 72 and it's going to print at 42 inches wide by you know whatever high some crazy thing like that then you need to fix that here. You need to modify it where you take off resample, you adjust the resolution. In fact, let me show you, sometimes for whatever reason it'll do something like this when you open it up. Well if you do this, my printer is going to tell me that it's too wide or it's going to be a problem or something. I'm going to look at this and I'm going to send it back to the teacher and say, hey, they didn't save it out properly. So make sure you just look at this and make sure that Illustrator or whatever you're using didn't screw this up, click on resample, change it to the target, and as long as the resolution's really there, as long as these things are all constrained, then you're not throwing any of your data away, it's going to be fine. So now it's actually going to print at the proper size with the proper resolution. Okay? And uh, that is the end of the demo.